We have some sad breaking news tonight. The former Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid of Nevada has died at the age of 82. Reid was a truly fascinating person. He was a boxer. He was head of the Nevada Gaming Commission. He served in the House, all before going to the Senate, where he served for 30 years. He led the Senate Democratic Caucus from 2005 to 2017, helping President Barack Obama pass through major legislation like the Affordable Care Act. Senator Chuck Schumer, who succeeded Reid as the leader of the Senate Democrats, released a statement tonight saying, quote, Harry Reid was one of the most amazing individuals I've ever met. He was tough as nails, strong, but caring and compassionate, and always went out of his way quietly to help people who needed help. Faz Shakir was a senior advisor to Senator Harry Reid, and he joins me now. Um, Faz, thanks for joining us on short notice. And I, I first met you over a decade ago, I think, when you were working for Senator uh, uh, Reid, and I know... Um, his mentorship and working for them was really a formative experience. Maybe you could just say a little bit about what the man was like to work for. Not just for me, but there you could have countless numbers of former Reed staff on here tonight who would all tell you the same thing. There was a unique ethic around Harry Reed. I, I learned it when I first joined him, a, a culture of team Reed. And I remember thinking when I joined him, like, this is kind of a cult. What, what is this team Reed philosophy? And you, and you learn almost immediately upon working for this individual. He inspires a loyalty. Where's that loyalty come from? It's, a, it's this place of, of, of a selflessness that's rare of a public official. He, he learns and cares and thinks about the people around him and got to know their families, knew what drive them. I often think about some of these individuals in public life and what are their superhuman traits and qualities. For Harry Reid, it wasn't like his ability to do a speech, as you well know. It wasn't great <laughs> eloquence on the floor. It was around knowing people, knowing what makes them tick, and inspiring a, a sense of getting the most out of them, putting them in positions to succeed. And there are so many staff who could tell you, regale you with stories of just un, uh, like uh, unusual desire on his part to reach out and care for another. And, it, you know, it's rare in the public officials these days where, you know, obviously you're driven by social media and all kinds of other stuff to find humans like him who truly believed in the ethic of public service to think about others before himself. There was a there was a he had a fascinating career um, and, and there were a few different evolutions he underwent that I think are, are key to understanding our political moment. And I think partly because I look at you and, and Adam Jenelson and other Reed staffers who've gone on to staff, you know, other people and Bernie Sanders uh, uh, among them. You know, Reed was um, he was a he was sort of an immigration hawk uh, when he started. Um, he was uh, opposed to abortion. He was a devout Mormon. He was uh you know, I think from a kind of centrist mold, uh, he was also kind of institutionalist. And he sorts of, he evolves over the course of his career on both his kind of substantive ideological vision and also his view towards the nature of the Republican Party and the nature of the Senate as an institution in really surprising ways. He, he, a little like John Paul Stevens in some ways in that way, that, you know, where, where he started and where he ended up in public life is a fascinating trajectory um, with, with integrity it throughout I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, in many ways, he, uh, you know, on some of those issues that you raise, he evolved with the Democratic Party and the majority very mindful and not kind of stubborn about where he might have started from, but say, hey, you know, this is where, in some sense, allow yourself to evolve with the circumstances. And nothing probably exemplifies that more, you know, Chris, and you and I remember it, when he changed the Senate rules, right? He fought to say, hey, listen, these Senate rules don't work anymore. I'm a, I'm a Senate traditionalist. I believe in this institution. However, you, you have President Obama's nominees being stalemated one after another. I'm going to change the rules. I'm going to go ahead and do it. And I think that instance exemplified one element of Harry Reid that will carry forth through, you know, forever, which is this desire to just embrace the fight when the fight needed to be had. And I think there's there's too often kind of a you know like, you know this desire for bipartisanship, a comity. Of course we want all those things. We want, you know, a, a, a decent relationship with each other in the in politics. But the purpose of politics as Harry Reid understood very well is to get stuff done. And so I, I think part of it is this hard scrap of life. As you remember, he went through like, you know, grew up in poverty, was a boxing commissioner, almost, almost was died, almost was killed in a, a, remember, in a car bomb right, planted by the mob. And it just The mob tried to assassinate him, literally tried to assassinate him uh, because literally he was going after them as the ga gaming commissioner. And they put a car bomb underneath the car that was discovered before he got in it, right? He, yes. And, and he lost an eye 
late in life. You remember from a freak accident, yep. it cost him eyesight and whatnot. He was diagnosed with cancer late in life, pancreatic cancer. And it, 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 and the grit of the man was that we just charge through and fight. Nothing, no, no obstacles, no barriers are going to stop us. We're going to continue to to care and fight for the things that we know need to get done. And it, there's a kind of an ethic of that old school politician in him that was, you know, come from hard things. We know hard things and we do hard things here. And I think that's one of the lessons I, you know, I hope people would take away is that he was a person, as you mentioned, evolved over time on some core views, but never forgot where he came from, had principal convictions to the end about the things that he believed politicians should be fighting for and not himself, but for others, and was willing to change rules, was willing to evolve with the circumstances to get things done. And that is his legacy.